Hi gang, so the Arcs of Omen have descended on the galaxy in Warhammer 40k's latest campaign, and the forces of the galaxy are fighting brutal close quarter boarding actions to stop them. But what are the Arcs of Omen? Who is Vashtor the Archiphane? And what is the Silver Key? So, the nice people at Games Workshop sent me this, Abaddon, Book 1 of the Arcs of Omen Quadrilogy. Three more of these will be released over the coming months, each of which advance the plot and presumably add new game material, but we're not here to talk about that. Instead, in this video, I'm going to go through the first part of the story of the Arcs of Omen. So, let's set the scene. The setting is early in the 42nd millennium, as far as anyone can tell anymore. At the dawn of the new millennium, Cadia fell and the Great Rift spread across the galaxy, dividing the Imperium in two. In its wake, the resurrected Primarch, Robert Giaman, launched the Indomitus Crusade to shore up Imperium Sanctus on the near side of the Rift, the first phase of which concluded with the Plague Wars against Mortarion's Death Guard. Other major conflicts were fought at Chalnath and Octarius before various forces converged on Vigilus, a world that controlled the only route through the Great Rift. Both the Imperium and the forces of Chaos, led by Abaddon the Despoiler, poured forces into the battle for Vigilus, which eventually spread into a war fought across the Nakmund Gauntlet, the stable warp route between Vigilus on the Nihilist side of the Rift and Sanguaterra on the Sanctus side. And it's here our story starts. As Abaddon assigned more and more forces to the assault on Vigilus, commanded by his proxy, Harkon World Claimer, the different warbands spread out to sow chaos in the systems and planets nearby. One of these targets was Pergamatros, the site of an ancient inquisitorial data vault. It was invisible behind layers of Orspex baffles, but over a short period of time, a series of seemingly coincidental events occurred. A system badly maintained, a failsafe that chose just the right time to fail, a backup generator that took slightly too long to restart, and the moon that housed the data vault was temporarily exposed to a Black Legion war fleet led by Warpsmith Vask, who just happened to be in the area and just happened to be pointing their augurs in the right direction at the right time. The battle for Pergamatros was swift and effective, and as the Warsmith's legionnaires fought back the Skatari defenders, his dark tech magi scoured the data vaults below, where one of them, a lowly menial assigned to the Warsmith's forces temporarily, came across a Baroque data tome. The device looked to be full of dark and valuable secrets, so the menial, a magi called Jureg, resolved to learn them so he could advance his own station once he returned to his day job. As one one of thousands of tech magi aboard the Vengeful Spirit, Abaddon the Despoiler's battleship and former flagship of Horus himself. Cut to some time later, the battles in the Nakmund Gauntlet continue to rage on. Mortarion is fighting his plague wars across Imperium Sanctus, but the Vengeful Spirit, badly damaged after the Vigilus campaign, is away from the battlefront undergoing repairs. Abaddon orchestrates his long war from afar, receiving updates on his various commanders and allies when the whole ship starts to convulse. His warp oracles malfunction and strange silvery worms start to spread from every surface of his chamber, and he soon receives reports that it's happening all over the ship. Silver worms and brass clockwork cogs spilling from every surface. When his retinue and sorcerers eventually track down the source of this, they discover our hapless dark magi, Jureg, in the aftermath of a repair ritual gone wrong, and on a lectern at the heart of this ritual, the mysterious data tome. Jureg was taken off for excruciation, and Abaddon and his retinue followed the effects of the ritual to the bridge, where they found its systems ripping themselves apart and reforming into a great mechanical summoning vortex. And as the vortex sucked in the bridge crew and the servitors, and their blood anointed the ritual, a figure stepped forth. Vashtor the Archiphane. Vashtor is neither a demon prince, a demon, or a great chaos power. Described as a demigod, Vashtor is the ruler of the soul forges, and the chaotic embodiment of innovation and technology gone awry. 
The Soulforges are an independent entity within the warp, refashioning the demons who signed Vashtor's contracts into great techno-demonic war engines like the Soul Grinders. And because of this, Vashtor is unaligned to any of the four Chaos powers. He plays them off against each other, the arms dealer of the great game. But Vashtor wants more. He wants to be a fifth great power, and he has plans to make this happen. All this he explains to Abaddon, including how he's manipulated events so far to affect his own summoning. Poor Jureg, he was a dupe all along. Abaddon has been searching for an ancient prophecy or fragment of knowledge that will lead him to a great weapon of fate-changing power, and Vashtor points out that he knows what this prophecy is. We see the whole prophecy of a silver key inlaid with bone and brass beneath a world of ashes, a key that opens a lock blazing with the light of dying stars and can release a great horror from its long imprisonment. But Abaddon isn't completely convinced, so Vashtor offers to show him and bids him meet on the world of Magdalore, where he can recover his first free sample of the key, because Vashtor is apparently the demon of MLMs now. The world of Magdalore was defended by the Iron Angels chapter of Space Marines, and let's just say things don't go very well for them. But as Abaddon and his Terminator bodyguard carved through their fortress monastery, they noticed that much of the chapter had already been destroyed. Deep in the vaults of the fortress, they found the last remnants of the chapter to making a desperate last stand against Vashtor's techno-demonic hordes, and as Abaddon defeated the chapter master, Vashtor presented to him the artifact they had apparently come to seek, a marble pillar floating in a stasis field. Vashtor's plan was to create this key from the prophecy, and to do this he needed to gather and combine a huge number of esoteric artifacts. He didn't yet know exactly where they all were, or how many he needed, but they all shared a common warp signature, so he'd figured out a way of tracking them. A few of these were in the warp, where his demonic legions could easily travel, but most were in real space, hoarded in vaults or buried deep within planets across the galaxy, in places harder for a demon army to access. But if they could gather these relics and create the key, Vashtor could gain the power he wanted, and Abaddon could advance his long war against the Imperium. The Despoiler agreed, but he didn't want the Black Legion to do this on their own, especially with so many other conflicts happening at the same time, so he put out the call to all followers of Chaos, mortal and Astartes, of great gifts for any who followed him. Using the expertise of Vashtor, he drew forth huge numbers of Space Hulks from the warp. Space Hulks are the long-dead wrecks of spacecraft lost in the warp, millennia of human and Xenos ships pulled together by the tides of the warp and crushed into colossal mismatched labyrinths, haunted by demons and monstrous aliens. Even one Space Hulk is a cause for alarm if thrown out of the warp near an inhabited system, but through Vashtor he managed to gather dozens, and as Abaddon's forces attempted to clear their interiors of dangerous occupants, at least just enough to control them, Vashtor started his modifications. The machine spirits of the Space Hulks were bound with ritual wards, markings or great chains, and infested with flesh metal ganglions to tie their divergent systems together. Great shields, comms arrays, weapons batteries and flight decks were attached to their hulls, and ancient weapon systems brought back to life. Each Hulk was fitted with an obeliskine, a waypoint and warp beacon for their attendant fleets, and a captive portal that led back to Abaddon's staging area, and to control all this, a demonic pilot entered called a ferryman. These were the Arcs of Omen, and Abaddon gifted command of each one to one of the warbands that pledged their service. Attended by numerous other ships, each of these Arcs would form the centre of a bale fleet and be given a mission to follow one of the warp signatures and recover one of these mysterious fragments in whatever form it took, and to return it to him through the portal. After that, the warband in question could do whatever they wanted with the Ark. Once they'd returned their fragment as far as Abaddon was concerned, they were expendable. Vashtor and Abaddon knew that not every Ark would succeed, that some would be stolen and diverted, others destroyed, but hopefully enough would recover their fragment for Vashtor to work his literal engineering magic, and to ensure this, Abaddon seeded double agents and Alpha Legion operatives amongst some of the less trusted of the warbands, and then set them off into the darkness. A dozen arcs in the first wave. At first, the appearance of these bale fleets seemed completely random, the arcs descending on populous hive worlds and deserted rocks, on ancient tomb worlds or planets overrun with swarms of tyranids. 
The Ogre, led by the Nurgle warlord Gullthorg the Blighted, fought against the Adeptus Auroritas and Black Templars, along with hundreds of regiments of Astra Militarum in the Cortosa system. The Bloodmoor appeared in the skies of the Forge world of Gryar. The Sobbing God materialized within a tendril of the High Fleet Kraken, and the Thousand Suns directed the Beast in Scarlet against the Necron Tomb world of Vol. But eventually, the rest of the galaxy started to piece together that this was no uncoordinated random event. It was a new assault, a coordinated plan. As usual, the Eldari were the first to realize this, and as they attempted to predict the path of the Arcs and intercept them, they reached out to Inquisitor Cotias of the Ordo Malleus. And alongside some other Inquisitors, the Imperium slowly begun to formulate some sort of ponderous response. Space Marine and Sororitas kill teams boarding the Arcs in the depths of the Void, where wherever they could be detected. Eventually, Abaddon's most trusted commanders were dispatched to key bail fleets. When the Dirge Discordant was destroyed by a rival Chaos faction, Abaddon took command of its mission himself, destroying the Cadian stationed on Chiron Tertius and rescuing the innocuous stone chalice that lay at the end of the thread. And when the mission to rescue the fragment found on Malak Bile faltered, Abaddon dispatched one of his greatest weapons, the demon Primarch Angron. Champion of Corn and Lord of the World Eaters. And that's the story so far. Abaddon's on a giant galactic Easter egg hunt trying to collect all the Pokemon so Vashtor can make them into Megazord. It's Chaos versus literally everybody else, including sometimes themselves, at various random sites around the galaxy, and the defenders are only just waking up to what might be happening. To support this early stage of the conflict, there's a new way to play boarding actions. And this is actually really interesting to me, something I've been wanting from 40k for ages. Really small forces, no stratagems, warlord traits or relics, so really simple forces, fighting their way through a spaceship board. In fact, I just built a spaceship board and I reckon I can twist it to fit all these mission layouts. And this looks fun, it's somewhere in between Kill Team and Zone Mortalis in scale, but look, this isn't a gaming video, someone else can do that one. The next book in the series is named Angron, so I expect we'll be zooming in on that Malak Bile mission and seeing how the rest of the galaxy responds. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to keep track with the lore of 40k, there's a video just coming up there on the right. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are affiliate links to buy your Warhammer goodies and a Patreon link in the thing below. See ya.